Linear Programming 1. Alexis is Megan's competitor. They both own companies that build dog and playhouses. Now we looked at Megan's work uh, in Lesson 5-8. Now we're going to take a look at Alexis's. And her graph is going to be a little bit different. Let's take a look at it. The feasible region that's described by Alexis's carpenters and painters. And um, again, it is a discrete graph, so we'll have discrete points because this is the number of houses that can be built in one week. All right, this is the feasibility region, everything underneath these lines and bounded by the x and y axis. Okay, because we can't have negative houses here. All right, now the vertices are going to be very, very important. Okay, if she doesn't build any dog houses, she can build 12 playhouses. If she doesn't build any playhouses, she can build 17 dog houses. And if she does a little bit of both here, we've got a vertex at 8 dog houses and 10 playhouses. Now, Alexis is a businesswoman and she knows that there are a lot of different combinations of building that can be done here. She doesn't want to do it haphazardly. She really wants to maximize her profits. So she's going to do a bit of what we call linear programming. She's going to take a look at this region and compare it with her profit chart. So let's take a look at her profits. Now, Alexis is going to earn more on the playhouses than the dog houses. She's going to make profit on the playhouses of $1,200 and profit on the dog houses of $500. So her equation is going to look like this. Her total profit will be equal to $500 on every dog house plus $1,200 on every playhouse. Okay, so this is her profit equation. Yes, they are quite expensive houses. So, any one of these points in this region could be placed in here for D and P because these are the possible houses that can be built in one week with her worker hours. And these are the profits that would result given the various D and P. So we've got a lot of different profits that could be made here. We want to find out what's going to be the maximum. Now, you look at the graph, I mean, this one's out farther to the right, this one's up higher to the north, and this one's over here, but, you know, those look like they might be maximums, but who knows, maybe the, the real kicker is right centrally located. Well, it turns out that there was a mathematician from France named Jean-Baptiste Joseph Fourier, and in 1826 he proved that anytime you want to find a maximum and a minimum, or a minimum, with a linear programming problem like this, all you really have to do is look at the vertices. Test the individual vertices of your feasible region and your feasibility region and see which one generates either a minimum or a maximum. So let's go and do that. Let's start with this one. Let's try no dog houses and 12 playhouses. All right, we'd be making um, no dog houses. So our profit equation, let's see here, we're going to have 500 times no dog houses plus $1,200 times 12 playhouses, which is going to give me, well, let's see, 12 times 12 is 144 with two zeros. So, with this option, she'll make $14,400 in one week. Now, let's see what would happen if we picked this one over here. Okay. 17 playhouses or excuse me, 17 dog houses, but no playhouses. Now see here, there are more, so maybe this will give us the maximum. All right, so it would be 500 times 17 plus no playhouses, so no $1,200 profits. And that's going to generate $8,500 in profit. So it looks like this is going to be the maximum, but 
there's still one other vertex to check. You know, maybe a little bit of each will give us a little higher profit than this. Let's see. Let's try 8 and 10. 8 dog houses, 10 play houses. So $500 times 8 dog houses plus $1,200 times 10 playhouses. Now let's see here. Over here we're going to get 4,000 and over here we are going to get 12,000 which look at that $16,000 with just three minutes of algebra and knowing what she's doing she can tell her workers exactly what to build to maximize her profits. Look, this is a huge difference here. Very, very huge difference. Just by telling them how much of one kind to build, she's going to make a lot more money. A lot more money. So, this is a brief overview of linear programming. You're just simply graphing some lines, finding some vertices, and exploring a profit equation, or a cost equation, or a calorie equation, or whatever the problem may be presenting to you. And this is how we do the best way to run our businesses. Oh, 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 oh,